Thanks for all, everyone, for coming. Um, it's, uh, Prosecutor Brad Cooper. My name is Matt Thormuth. I'm the Assistant Chief with the Greenland Police Department. I just want to go over briefly uh, what happened at the homicide scene Friday. Um, Friday, August 28th, we responded about 4 o'clock in the afternoon to 765 Wooddale Terrace, apartment 13, on a report of shots fired. Uh, responding officers did find the victim in the case, which is 20-year-old Douglas Lane of Bargersville, dead of a gunshot wound to the head in the bedroom of the apartment. Um, very early on, we were able, with the assistance of the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force here out of Indianapolis, to uh, identify the suspect in this case, which is 29-year-old Marcus A. Hardy of Indianapolis. Uh, with the assistance of the U.S. Marshals, within probably 12 hours of the homicide itself, they initially located Hardy uh, on the northwest side of Indianapolis. With the assistance of the Indy Metro Police Department, Hardy was observed leaving the uh, apartment before they were able to get a good perimeter set up. A short police pursuit ensued. Hardy crashed his car at the time and was able to escape on foot without being arrested at the time. The U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force kept on the case, and uh, Hardy was located uh, in a mall up by Maryville, Indiana, yesterday, and taken into custody without incident. Um, that's basically the, the gist of it. If you guys have any questions, if we can't answer them, we will. It was up around 71st and George or uh, Zionsville Road. Um, he was in an apartment. They located his vehicle there, and before they could actually get enough manpower in, he was seen uh, leaving the apartment. So they had to contact the IMPD and just try to get a traffic stop set up on him, and he fled. What was the motive? Yes, he went to the apartment with the intent of selling a pound of marijuana to the victim and two witnesses that were in the bedroom. Um, he never intended to sell marijuana. He didn't have the marijuana with him. It was always his intention to go there and rob the victim and the uh, two other witnesses. So they were set up? Yes. How many people were at the apartment uh, when I don't have a total count. There was uh, people inside the bedroom where the murder actually took place, and there were people out in the general area. Um, you would have to check with IMPD on that. I do not know the details of that. Are you able to say who the apartment They were not on the lease for the apartment. That's all I can say. Are any of them from Greenwood? As far as the, the suspect or the suspect? victim? No. Greenwood's a safe community. It always has been a safe community. Um, you look at the lack of crime down here, especially the violent crime, and um, you know you can see that it's not. However, no community is safe from crime in general or uh, violent crime. And in instances like this, we get people calling the police department and go, should I be looking over my shoulder? There's a murder loose. Okay, well, every day in the general public, tomorrow's murders are walking amongst us today. So. Um, being this close to a large metropolitan area like Indianapolis, um, you know, approximately 54% of all arrests that we make in Greenwood are not Greenwood residents and are typically from the Indianapolis area. Have these two met up before? No. Okay. No. No, they did not or no, you don't? No, they did not know each other. This uh, deal was set up to a third party. What's the message about <coughs> buying drugs? Eighty percent of all crime can be tied back to drugs in some fashion. You know, it's um, it's a criminal enterprise, um, and a lot of times anything goes with these people. And as this was the case, he didn't think twice of about come up here and uh, committing a robbery and a murder. Doesn't that get to what pound of marijuana is worth? And I'm trying to figure out what this guy was killed over. Well, it um, in this case, um, the deal was supposed to be set up for three thousand two hundred dollars for a pound. He didn't bring any marijuana with him. He no, just he brought the gun. The money. Did he get the money? I don't know what the total uh, take was. So he did steal the money from both of us. Um, I'm not at liberty to discuss someone's criminal background on this. Can you tell the Johnson County Jail? Yes. What charge was murder? Yes. 
Oh, somebody charged with murder. We're going to charge him with um, murder uh, sometime probably tomorrow. Will there Formally. be murder or anything other than murder? Uh, right now it's just murder, yes. No, um, yeah, I mean, we have a police run for just about every apartment complex in Greenwood. This was not particularly a troubled one. Uh, this apartment complex just got purchased about a month ago. Uh, they are in the process of refurbishing the entire complex and actually raising the rent. Any other questions? As far as police work, it seems, you know, this happened Friday. You guys were able to have a suspect in custody. When was he arrested again? Was that this morning? Yesterday, yesterday afternoon. We're very fortunate here in that, you know, we are a very lean police department for a city this size. However, we have people like, you know, the prosecutor himself is there at the scene, uh, directing our detectives and helping us with legal issues. We have judges that don't hesitate to get up in the middle of the night, um, answer our questions or sign our warrants. We also have partners like the U.S. Marshal Service, who is indispensable as far as this case goes. And, when you are a small department like the size that we are, you have to rely on these partnerships with uh, other agencies like the, any Metro Police Department, our prosecutor's office, our court system, and our federal partners. As, as, a, as, a, as a citizen of Johnson County, we're very fortunate to have a police department like Greenwood that has taken on this case um, and solved it so quickly, getting the murderer off the street. As a prosecutor, I'm very blessed that, that we get solid cases um, that are that are meticulously gone over to where we're not going to have evidentiary issues down the way that occur in other jurisdictions. How much, how much time passed between the actual murder that you spotted at the scene until you were able to identify him? Uh, the marshals had his identification that evening. Any more questions? All right. Thank you all for coming.